requester. Note that evidence does not necessarily mean a decision. So how do you formulate a response? If you look at the slide, you will see that there are five areas that we will go over. The first is a statement of the question. Here you could include any assumptions made for lack of information on the patient, for example, age, organ function, etc. You can also include background information on diseases, pharmacology, pharmacokinetics, etc. as they pertain to the question. The second is to list the evidence. There are many ways of arranging this section. If there is one very strong piece of evidence, arrange from most significant to least significant. For example, meta-analysis to RCT to cohort to case control, or include the strongest piece of evidence at the end to give a lasting impression. If the information is controversial, arrange based on outcome, example positive and negative. If it is an extensive review, it can be arranged chronologically. If there are numerous points to the discussion, arrange per topic. Remember to include any flaws, biases, or incomplete information. Be objective, and do not feel obliged to include all information which you found, specifically the weaker pieces of information, when stronger information is available. The third step is to make a summary. Emphasis is placed on information that should correlate with the strength of evidence. Be careful how you word your summary. Try to be specific, remembering that the inquiring person has not read and evaluated the studies which you read. Point four is to make your recommendation. It should be adequately supported by reliable sources or insufficient information to make a recommendation could be suggested. Separate personal opinion from a fact. The fifth point is your references. When giving an oral response for a drug information inquiry, remember that the content of an oral response should include the following. A brief restatement of the problems and circumstances. It may require detailed background information to explain the rationale for your answer. Include a brief summary of the pertinent facts in the literature and your sources that you use to gather background information. For topics where little information was found, it is always good to let your requester know where you have looked so that they know the depth to which you have researched the question. List the limitations of the selected studies or literature. Include a conclusion based on your analysis of the data and why it is valid based on the limitations of the references. Ensure that your subjective opinions are separate from your objective findings. For example, you may have formulated an opinion based on your research which may not yet be validated. You may want to provide supportive materials to the requester. Characteristics of an effective oral response include answer the question, try to be concise and appropriate, Tailor the level of information and terminology to the requester. Consider the impact of your response to the patient. Is the information useful and pertinent? Confirm that the response is adequate to meet the needs of the requester. Follow-up. The need for follow-up depends on the type of question and pharmaceutical care you practice. Example, a hospital, long-term care facility, ADR center, or in the community. You may elect to follow up an adverse drug reaction, or you may elect to follow up an unknown drug interaction combination where little information is known about using the two drugs together. Even though the response is complete, it doesn't mean that you stop collecting information. Or, if new information or evidence is available that addresses the original request and is likely to require a change from your previous recommendations, or if you'd like to confirm that your recommendations have made a clinically significant impact that may benefit other patients in a similar situation. In conclusion, recall why we use a systematic approach. It provides a consistent starting point for a search, serves as a checklist so that nothing is repeated and nothing is missed. Finally, it ensures a consistent professional end product. The result, smart answers to smart questions, Easier questions may require greater effort and complex or difficult questions become easier. Greater efficiency at your job. The ultimate question is determined early on, leading to an easier choice or selection of resources with the best resources utilized first. All forms of pharmacy practice incorporate the provision of drug information. It is an essential skill to learn because of the dynamic nature of medicine that requires a lifetime of learning. Here is the contact information for the BC Drug and Poison Information Centre. We hope that you will find it useful when you get into your own practice.